this is the formula to find simple interest and this is the formula to find compound interest where p stands for principal amount r stands for rate of interest per annum usually denoted by the shorthand pa and t stands for time period for our discussion let's consider it in years but you might be wondering why these two look so drastically different we will find that out in this video but before that some context suppose you are in a situation where two of your friends say friend a and friend b ask you to lend them some money and they promise you to return the amount after the same time at the same rate of interest friend a comes forward with a plan as shown principal is p rate of interest is r percent per annum and time period is t years so the interest after t years would be p times r times t over 100 which we are denoting by uppercase i this is simple interest isn't it friend b comes up with a different strategy altogether he noticed that during his calculation friend a kept the principal amount as you can see here the same and didn't really change it at all he was like if we are getting some interest after first year as we can see here we should update the principal amount by adding the interest generated after each year to get a higher principal which will further generate higher interest let's see this in action to begin with we have the principal amount as p and rate of interest as r percent per annum let us calculate the amount received after year one so the interest after one year will be p times r times one upon 100 let us denote it by i1 i1 basically means interest after year one simplifying this we will get p r upon 100 therefore the amount after year one will be nothing but the original principal amount which is p plus the interest that we have generated which is i1 which is p r upon 100 taking p common we will get p times 1 plus r over 100 now this amount will become the principal amount for second year remember we are updating the principal amount after every unit time period in this case annually which is every year but it can be done half yearly and quarterly as well so the principal amount after one year call it p1 will be p times 1 plus r over 100 let us go back to the same format as friend a in order to compare and understand the difference i would like you to pay close attention to the principal row because that's where all the magic is happening now these are all the details that we have just now calculated which is for the year one so continuing on our path remember we have already updated the principal amount as p1 here which is the first change that you should be noticing so continuing forward the interest after two years for friend b will be p1 which is the updated principal times r times 1 upon 100 that is p1 r upon 100 you might be thinking wait the time period after two years must be two right well for calculating simple interest for two years directly yes you're absolutely right but here as you can see we have already calculated the interest for the first year the second year's duration is still one year so keeping the time period of two will be incorrect so the amount after two years will be the principal amount after one year that is p1 plus the interest p1 r upon 100 taking p1 common we get p1 times 1 plus r over 100 but remember p1 is p times 1 plus r over 100 substituting which we will be getting this particular expression remember this is the same thing multiplied twice therefore the amount after two years will be p times 1 plus r over 100 whole squared now this will be the principal amount let's call it p2 
for the third year and the process continues so on. At this point, I encourage you to pause the video and calculate the amount after three years in terms of P, R and 3. Assuming that you have given it a try, is it P times 1 plus R over 100 to the power 3? If so, you are absolutely right. But this calculation is too cumbersome and difficult. It would have been so nice to have a formula to directly find the interest after t years, isn't it? How about we find it out by our observation skills? If you have been involved so far in the calculations, you must have noticed that it seems like this quantity 1 plus r over 100 is getting multiplied for each year and that indeed is the case. I highly recommend you to try to calculate the amount after 4th and 5th year to really solidify this idea. And thus, we reach the condition that the amount after t years compounded annually is given by p times 1 plus r over 100 to the power of t, where t is basically the number of years that we have. And since this quantity will be multiplied t times, therefore, the power is t. I know what you're thinking, but what about the interest after t years? So for that, all we need to do is subtract the original amount p from the amount a and hence we get p times 1 plus r over 100 to the power of t, which was nothing but the amount after t years minus p. You can take p as common if you want and we are done. So who will get the money? We can plug in some numbers and see that compound interest is usually, not even usually for that matter, is higher than simple interest as you can see on your screens. So in this video, we learned that compound interest happens to be an extension of the concept of simple interest with a slight adjustment. That adjustment involves updating the principal amount after every unit time period. 